make sure you're doing it right, Raquel. All right, we call this uh, board meeting to order. Uh, first thing out of the shoot here is we're going to have uh, Scott is going to do us in Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. First thing up is we get to introduce our new uh, student representatives. And so You bet. Is that better? Okay. Uh, so for our new student representatives, uh, congratulations, you guys. So I'm going to uh, say your first name and then you guys can make a comment. So Lucia, you're here first. So we're going to go with you first. Um, <laughs> my name is Lucia and I'm a junior at Newburgh High School and I'm super excited to be representing my school on this board. And yeah. Then we have Moya. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hi, I'm Moya. I'm also a junior in Newburgh High School. I'm also super excited to like represent just like students and give like, I think like kids at our school like a voice like on the board. Yeah. Well, you guys are nervous tonight. <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, last year was the first time in many years that we had student reps, and uh, and so it'll be a little bit different this year. New students, uh, they got big shoes to fill, but I think you guys will do a great job. So thanks for wanting to do this. Appreciate you guys. Um, next up is uh, we're going to review the agenda. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, Approval of minutes from 1025, we'll have the public comments, and then we will uh, have our union representative comments. Uh, tonight we have uh, Drew Gallagher will be here, and then we'll also have Dr. Uh, Phillips speaking for Jennifer Esmond, who's a classified union president. Uh, she's uh, not able to make it tonight, so Dr. Phillips will read her comments. Uh, consent agenda, new hires and resignations, uh, board and superintendent comments, uh, reports, presentations, and discussion items. And then future agenda items uh, for the 1129. Uh, just so everybody knows, on 1129 is the next board meeting. So make sure everybody writes that down. It's 1129. It's a work and it is a work session, yes. Uh, and then the uh, uh, at that point, so we should be pretty close to being on time tonight. Uh, we have several comments. And before we do, um, I'm going to get the uh, a motion for approval of the minutes from 1025. Uh, I move we uh, approve the minutes from 1025. I second. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion passes 6-0. Okay, under the public forum, just going to remind everybody, uh, during this portion of the board meeting, members of the public are specifically invited to present items uh, of accommodation and or concerns. Personal matter, personnel matters may not be discussed in a public uh, at a school board meeting. Members of the public who have personal concerns or accommodations should share them directly with the district superintendent. Again, we're just asking everybody to, uh, when you come up, come up to the microphone uh, and uh, speak clearly. You have two minutes to speak. I'll announce the first person, they'll come up and then there'll be a warning and then at two minutes we'll stop and we'll move on to the next one. At the end, we'll have Dr. Phillips read uh, a couple of comments that uh, were written in. So the first person up is Carla Parker. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Okay, because <laughs> I really want you guys to hear me too. My name is Carla Parker, and I am 
extremely concerned about the onslaught of resignations that have plagued this district in the last 12 months. I understand you can replace people. And I also understand that you guys are having a little bit of a difficult time doing so. But what you cannot replace is the institutional knowledge and expertise that left with these people. This will take years to recover. And it all started a year ago. Dr. Joseph Morlock, superintendent, terminated without cause. Dr. Derek Brown, assistant superintendent, resigned. Nikki Fowler, director of HR and finance, resigned. Dr. Luke Neff, director of instructional technology, resigned. Shiloh Fisick, nutrition Sur services supervisor, resigned. Ann Zeal, director of special programs, resigned. Cassandra Thonstad, administrator on special assignment, resigned. Karen Pugsley, director of teaching and learning, resigned. Greg Koskella, communications coordinator, resigned. John McAndrews, principal Antonio Crater Elementary School, resigned. Tim Graham, principal Catalyst Alternative School, resigned. Casey Petrie, principal Shehalem Valley Middle School, resigned. Reed Langdon, principal Dundee Elementary School, resigned. Terry McElligott, principal Mountain View Middle School, resigned. Scott Murphy, principal Edwards Elementary, resigned. David Jaimez, assistant principal Edwards Elementary, resigned. Tim Burke, athletic director, Assistant Principal Newburgh High School, resigned. Jen Nelson, Board Secretary, resigned. Inez Pena, Newburgh School District Director, resigned. I, I didn't even get halfway through my list and um, and I don't didn't even get the chance to talk about teachers. So um, thank you. Our second speaker will be uh, Kath Blankenburg. We have a Kath Blankenbiller. There she goes. Kath Blankenbiller, I live in Newburgh. Dr. Phillips and Newburgh School Board members, I thank you for continuing to stay focused on the academic education of our Newburgh School students. According to an October 24, 2022 article in the Wall Street Journal, our students in the United States continue to trail behind. I quote, the nation's schools recorded the largest drop in math scores ever this year with fourth and eighth grade students in nearly every state showing significant declines. This is according to the education department data released Monday as of this writing. In the most sweeping analysis of test scores since the start of the pandemic, the 2022 National Assessment of Educational Progress known as the nation's report card, also revealed a nationwide plunge in reading that wiped out three decades of gains. And that's the end of the quote. Whatever the cause of this academic downfall, there's absolutely no time in any classroom to be wasted on fo focusing on skin color or the inappropriate sexualization of our children or learning to dislike everything about America. Every child will grow up and must be able to support themselves and their family. They must be as competent as possible and able to compete with people in other countries. You can be sure that children in China, Russia, and India are not being taught to hate their country or to have adults constantly focused on the children's genitals. Please continue to stand strong for academic excellence in our schools. The other distractions have no place in our schools. Thank you.
Our third speaker is Elaine Pascal. Good evening. Is this on? Okay. Hey, I will keep speaking every single time that I'm allowed to until you guys follow the rules. So to back up a little bit, um, I want to read something that really spoke to me. And it's just a little bit from um, a historian. Um, I don't think I wrote his name down. I'm sorry about that. Um, this is appropriate because it's election night. Um, in a functioning and stable democracy, the stakes shouldn't be as high as they are tonight. Elections should be competitions between political factions who disagree with each other, but accept the legitimacy of their opponents and are committed to upholding the democratic system. In America now, that's evidently not the situation. It has become dogma on the right to see Democrats as the enemy within, a fundamentally illegitimate un-American faction out to destroy the nation, an enemy that must not be allowed to govern. And um, I'm just going to tell you that on a feeling level, that's how I feel about the board. I feel like uh, we have disagreements and we tried to talk about them. And basically I was told, I'm not listening to you. I'm listening to them. I'm listening to the white people. I'm not listening to people of color. My ideology, my politics are what matters. But I think what frustrates me the most is that you have a process by which to complain. Am I right? You used that process last year to create a system of complaining about signs. I put in a complaint and you won't even respond to me. So yeah, I'm frustrated. I am frustrated. I will sit down with you. I will sit down with the board. I would like to be listened to. And I am one of the, I think over 200 employees who has left, you won. I left, but I left because I was attacked. I was left because that's one of my complaints. I left because I wasn't listened to. So I am asking you, please respond to me. Let's sit down, follow your process. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our fourth speaker is Sandra Fortmeyer. Hi, board members. I would like to um, introduce myself as a mom and a grandma uh, that has been closely uh, involved with the Newburgh School District. I have graduates from Newburgh High. Um, my son graduated uh, from Newburgh High with the help of the Learning Center, and uh, he had a learning disability, and he got the help there he needed. And he excelled academically because of the help he got there. And um, he married another graduate of Newburgh High um, who uh, got her master's degree from George Fox in education, and she is a special ed teacher. And we're very proud of them. Also, my son's best friend, um, married my daughter, my older daughter, and um, he is a master mechanic uh, for Toyota in Atlanta, Georgia now, and um, he had a learning disability as well. So I want to commend Newburgh High for supporting people with learning disabilities and encouraging them to excel academically. And I especially want to commend this board for putting the emphasis back on learning, math, English, history, languages, music, um, athletics. Thank you, because our kids need to have good educators. They need to have a good education so they can make it in this world, so they can earn a living, so they can raise their families. I have. Um, grandchildren that attended um, the Newburgh School District. And I say thank you for your concern about our kids. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you.
Here, our fifth speaker is Jerry Lida. <clears throat> Dr. Phillips and school board directors, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you and to our community. While schools in Oregon aren't doing well, I want to thank you for your vision of providing an excellent education of the three R's to all children, preparing them for college and or the workforce. And thank you for taking a stand against bullying. Now to our community. The recent flag burning at a home in Newburgh, whether done by an extremist from the right or from the left, has no place in our community. It is hateful and it is totally wrong. Whoever did it should be ashamed of themselves. It is time to stop the cycle of hate in our community. We need to stop these steps that lead to hateful actions. Number one, assigning malicious motives to people with other views like they are all racists or Marxists. Number two, creating a short snappy slogan that is easy to repeat to influence, to other, to influence others. Number three, becoming outraged and then getting others emotionally charged this step is important because that it, it then prepares them for the last step, which is attack. Using social media to recruit and organize people to do things like spreading hateful information on social media, even misinformation, swarming a business with phone calls, demanding they fire an employee if they have a different view than you, yelling at people in a restaurant until they take their embarrassed family and leave, destroying property, even physically attacking people if you disagree with them. These things have happened across our country and to some degree in our community. We don't want kids bullying others, but on social media, adults are some of the worst. All of you in Newburgh and Dundee, I implore you to stop making social media a toxic echo chamber of hate. Stop dividing our community. At Mabel Rush in second grade, Mrs. Shad told us, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's good advice. Let's make our community a place that we are proud of once again, and please, let's do our level best to help kids have an excellent education. Thank you. Our next speaker couldn't be here tonight, but she's got somebody to read it for her, and it'll be through Jer Witherspoon. Oh, Jer is it? Jerry, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I'm reading for Judy Tolkstad, my friend who had a family emergency today. My name is Judy Tolkstad, pronouns she, her. Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. I have two major concerns to bring before you and to the public who is sitting in this room or listening via live stream. You made a public statement regarding the recent hate crime involving a Newburgh School District employee. Unfortunately, this incident is not a one-off. I don't think you can imagine how this would feel. I can, it has happened to our family and it leaves you with a sense of impending violence. I have one question for everyone sitting in this room, especially the board member who verbally expressed with a hot microphone during a board meeting, I don't know why they need these signs and symbols. My question to you is, do you understand now? Do you understand why a word, a, a sign or words of affirmation translate to safety in the classroom and why this is important? Think about it. The obscene calls to the office and to the actions around the community should open your why, eyes as to why this is important. We should be asking every staff member to consider signs of affirmation and support, especially now. And honestly, you should be ashamed of your actions that led to the removal of such, such signs. Does this sound political or controversial? Be known, black student, be black dreams, black futures, black lives matter. They are not flags flying from a pole. They are words of support and affirmation. And the second point Judy would like to make is a few weeks ago, we learned that our director of teaching and learning has resigned and I've not yet seen a public announcement about this great loss to our district. Her knowledge along with her years of experience cannot easily be replaced. What are your plans for rebuilding a school district you have destroyed? How do you run a district without a teacher, a director of teaching and learning? Please be transparent with the community regarding this loss and your plans for the, her replacement. Thank you. Thank you.
Our seventh speaker is Jeff Musell. Um, thank you. I uh, did have a prepared remark. I'm going to go off script a little bit and kind of ask a question about something that was stated earlier about reading, writing, arithmetic, and how we put forth how we compare with other countries. And the examples were Russia, China, and India. And we really want to use these as examples of anything. In um, China and Russia today, they they are being taught that their leader is absolute, that they can do no wrong. And in China, they're being, I mean, in Russia, they're being taught that they need to go invade another country to support a fascist dictatorship. So, and if you look at comparisons with other nations, the other nations that do profoundly better are more inclusive. They're Sweden, Finland, Germany, France, Australia, Canada, places where inclusion is not a question. So I just wanted to throw that out there a bit, and then I'll get back to my reports. Please let me know if I go over the two minutes I have this time. But <laughs> I did want to point out that during the September meeting, Director Powell raised fears that because the board had lost the attempt to silence expressions of inclusion, that we would be seeing all kinds of signs from Confederate flags to Nazi symbols, and the public should blame those who fought for inclusion. I'd like to ask, where are the examples of this happening? What school district that did not try to enact bans against students who felt marginalized is struggling with Nazi or Confederate flags? I'm anxious to hear examples. Of course, there aren't any. This whole debacle the board undertook was a manufactured crisis to address a problem that didn't exist. Of course, that's not the only crisis to be set the district under this board. It seems every month there's something new. The only thing this board has managed to accomplish is causing chaos. If chaos is the goal, then it's getting done. If doing the best for students and the district is the goal, then I'd suggest each member of the board ask themselves if that's what's happening. Last meeting, people brought up concerns about special education and IEP requirements. That's an example of a real problem that needs real solutions. We should be talking about solutions instead of pushing issues with national public. All right, thank you. Uh, we still have a couple more comments from me read by Dr. Phillips. Okay, there's just two. First one is from Carrie Wolf. Dear Dr. Phillips, I cannot express how much I admire you for standing strong for the kids attending Newburgh Dundee schools. Kids lost a lot of their learning and interaction abilities during the pandemic. You are working your hardest to see that the students advance towards a lifetime of success by making sure that they learn the basics and not be confused or distracted by talks of politically charged propaganda. Keep up the good work and you will be abundantly rewarded. Sincere regards, Carrie Wolf. Uh, next one, and I doubt I'll get through it, <clears throat> from Brandon Casey. First, I would like to applaud this board and superintendent for enduring a sabotage on the school district brought on by far left extremists in our town. I can't imagine how hard it must be to keep schools functioning when left wing teachers and bus drivers all get together at virtually the same time and quit. This is an attempt to sabotage the district. Then the same people show up at school board meetings asking how many openings there are. They do this to bring attention to the fact that teachers have quit when they themselves were behind it and orchestrated it. It's the same movie we have seen in the past two years, the same far left, extre far left extremist filled frivolous lawsuits, filed, excuse me, frivolous lawsuits, and then showed up at school board meetings talking about how much the district had to spend on legal fees. Those legal fees were in defense of lawsuits brought on by the same group. Secondly, I'd like to address the equity issue. First, equity is made up. It's a term the left uses because it tested well at focus groups for getting a visceral reaction, which is all the far left groups do. They say, say things to get reactions. They never have any facts or data behind them, but they get an emotional response. I challenge anyone to show me one group of students in the Newburgh School District that has been denied access to go to school. 
or any group of students that does not have access to the same equipment or school supplies that other students have that are being offered by the school. The truth is there isn't one group of students that has been denied any of these things. There are families that have more money than other families and that's called life and that's not the fault of the school board nor something the board can fix. In closing, this board has done an outstanding job bringing learning and discipline back to schools, both desperately needed. They have done this in... Okay, that is it for our public comments tonight. I would just like to add, uh, it's just... Uh, School board policy that we don't comment after each person's comments. It's uh, it's always been that way. Um, we listen and we listen and we we don't make comments coming back at that. So it's not a time for a debate. Um, if you have anything further to say on that, you can write that in. Uh, but uh, again, it's a school board meeting. Our first job is school board business, and um, so thank you for your comments. Appreciate that, and we're gonna move on. So right now. Uh, we'll get into our union representative comments, and uh, we have the privilege of having our uh, teachers union president, uh, or vice president, I think, Drew Gallagher is here tonight. Hello. It's going to work. Hello. Thank you. Um, I'm Drew Gallagher. I'm here representing the uh, Newbrick Education Association tonight, and I just wanted to say a couple of things to express gratitude as well as hope. And I wanted to begin by thanking the professional educators who serve this community every day. And I'm referring to the teachers who have chosen to stay in this great district and community amidst uh, what seemed like a mass exodus. And for this week, especially because of Veterans Day coming up on Friday, I wanted to give a, an extra shout out and show tremendous gratitude for members of our teaching and uh, learning community who also served in the armed forces. So thank you very much. Uh, also, also uh, thank you to all the teachers for continuing to do great work for our students and for each other. Thank you for coming together with the understanding, belief and hope that as professionals, we can learn every day and continue to improve our craft and the work that we do in the classroom that benefits students to the administrators at the building and district level, as well as those elected into board positions. As stewards of our educational community, I extend the same sentiment. Uh, NEA members are looking forward to the leadership in this district, taking great strides to moderate actions and words that are seemingly designed uh, to divide this community or specifically crafted to serve one group ideology over another. We have staff, students, and families from all backgrounds who hold dearly a wide variety of perspectives and as teachers, we welcome and gladly teach and work with all of them. We don't pick and choose. We do what's best for students in our buildings and classrooms every time. The employees of Newburgh Public Schools want what's best for the entire community, the students, the families, and the employees. The constituents of Newburgh and Dundee, the family, students, and teachers, many of whom live in this community, look to our district level leadership with hope to make significant efforts in, the unite, in uniting Newburgh Public Schools in the coming weeks and months. This way, those looking to come here will see a fantastic opportunity, and the excellent educators who stayed will be reminded of what a great place Newburgh and Dundee, what a great places they are to work. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Drew. Again, Drew's... Uh... One of our excellent teachers at Newburgh High School. So thanks, Drew, for doing that. Um, again, Jennifer Esmond couldn't make it tonight, so Dr. Phelps is going to read her classified comments. She says, I really appreciate all the hard work of our classified staff, and I want them all to know that what they do is very important to all of the kids and families of the Newburgh School District. Staffing continues to be an issue for adults and kids alike. Attracting staff and retaining staff needs to be a top priority for the district and the board. I would also like to acknowledge the work of our OSEA executive board and the NEA executive board, along with district administration in the hard task of bargaining both contracts this year. I am looking forward to the contracts being finalized. Thank you again for the board's willingness to serve our community and invite each of you to take the time to come to our schools and witness the great work of our staff and especially the classified staff. Thank you, Jennifer Esmond. 
Uh, last year, just so everybody knows, we uh, changed it up a little bit. It was kind of like the same thing with the student reps. Uh, hearing from the leaders of both unions was really important. And so um, they have up to five minutes to to speak. And it's something that started last year and will continue on. And it uh, gives everybody a good insight in on to what's going on uh, to the teachers union and as well as the classified. So they have different uh, goal sometimes, and uh, then they overlap a lot. So uh, that's why that happens now. It's a, it's a really good thing. We learn a lot from them. So thanks, you guys. Um, next thing up here is uh, on the consent agenda, new hires and resignations. I'm just going to focus on one, and I think she's sitting right behind me here. Uh, we're going to accept the uh, probationary administrator contract for the director of teaching and learning to Jillian Flazarda. So, yeah. She didn't ask me to do that. I just kind of singled her out there. So if he's okay with that. Um, so you got that one. Um, I'll ask for a motion on that one, you guys. And accept we'll that consent agenda. To accept a consent agenda. What's that? I move to accept the consent agenda as okay. presented. I second it. All right. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Consent agenda is passed, 6 0. Okay, moving on to board and superintendent comments. I'm going to start uh, uh, right here with uh, Shelly Culp. So, Shelly, you're up first. I'd like to start with a thank you to Elise Jernil Holloman. She's an administrator for our wellness center and uh, thanking her for the personal tour. Uh, the center has recently been uh, uh, upgraded to add a medical uh, unit so for medical care as well as the ongoing free mental, uh, mental health care services. Um, although it's not our main uh, function to provide health care to students, we realize that happy students, healthy students are going to be more up to graduate, do well in school, do well in life. So it's very important that we have this. In addition to paraphrase Dr. Phillips, um, the Revised Center was a project where many people of different backgrounds came together for the common good of the kids, and it shows how much we can accomplish when we put our differences aside and work together for the good of our students. And also a shout out to the Newburgh Tiger cross country team for placing ninth in the statewide cross country track meet. All right, I'm gonna skip over to Director Shannon. Uh, I don't have a ton tonight. I just wanted to say welcome to our two new student reps. Look forward to working with you this year. And uh, yeah, that's all I have. Okay. Uh, Director Riley, good to go. Director Powell. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming tonight. And I also want to say welcome to our new student reps. So, And I also wanted to clear up since my mic wasn't working last week, um, that about what I wanted to say about the mural. Um, what I was trying to say is the cost, um, the long-term cost of um, if we hired a artist to do it, if it's done by volunteers, there probably wouldn't be any cost there, but you're still going to have cost with paint and supplies. So that's all I was trying to say last week. And also, I am not going to be doing the mural or running it, but I would be more than willing to help with that. And um, one more thing I would like to say um, and to let the public know is what the separation of church really means. Um, it is not in our Constitution, Bill of Rights, or any other founding documents. In reality, the Constitution secures our freedom of religion. Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter that the government um, was prohibited from interfering in any and all religious exercises. It was, it was to keep the government out of the church. So with that said, I can and I will continue to talk about God when needed and what is, what is said in his word, which is the truth that we are all missing. Go ahead. <clears throat> Director Perigino, you're up. Thank you. Um, there is a play 
uh, by the Newburgh Theater um, SpongeBob musical. If you have not gotten your ticket yet, you should. Um, I'm going with my family. We're looking forward to it. So I encourage you to uh, attend. Um, also, I have a proclamation here that I'm going to read. And it says, uh, in recognition of the vital importance for education, excellence, and meaningful collaboration between the school district and families, we recognize November as Parents' Rights in Education Month. Whereas we acknowledge parents are a child's first and foremost educator and have the primary responsibility for the education, care, and training of their children. And whereas education is comprised of a range of activities by which families and communities teach knowledge and skills, including ethical and behavioral norms and transitions. And whereas fairness and equality must be afforded to all students and families in the school district. And whereas public school need cooperation and support of all parents and whereas the parent-child relationship shall be honored and supported by teachers, counselors, administrators, and school board members. Therefore, we declare November Parents' Rights in Education Month, affirming the constitutional right of parents to, to direct education and upbringing of their children. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll go usually last, so I'm going on that one. Um, just in a recent uh, past, we had, a, it was mentioned earlier, we had a hate crime. And uh, as a board, we allow our superintendents, our one employee, to make public comments on things like that. Um, but this one is uh, a little above what, what should ever happen in any community anywhere. Um, I've communicated uh, with this family, um, no names involved. Something like this is, is so wrong on every level. It's so wrong that somebody would even attempt to, um, you know, harm somebody else, to um, endanger them, to do anything like that. In my last three years on the school board, I've seen enough hate to last me a lifetime. I've spent 59 years in this community. I've lived here my, almost my entire life. I've been around all kinds of people and I've never seen so much hate as I've seen the last three years in this community. And it's gotten so bad that something like this has to happen before people will even like acknowledge it. And everything I've gone through doesn't even, it pales in comparison to that. But to see people attacked in our community for people sitting in this room right now that get online and they get on Facebook and they attack people. They say things that should never be said to another human being. They get online and they say things because they don't like somebody or they disagree with them. They get online and they go after people's work. They go after people's marriages. They go after people's lives. They go after people and say things because they don't like them. And that all is, ends up at hate. Hate is such a terrible word. There's no reason that every single person in this room can't sit down with other people in this room and just talk. Many of you out there in this audience have come up here and said things. We don't get to respond. We don't get to do an ESPN broadcast and do a press release and say, no, that's not true. We don't get to do that. We sign up here because we try to help in our district. Nobody gets paid. Nobody gets any extra benefits, nothing. I've worked and coached more in this district than anybody in this room, anybody in that room too. And I'll tell you what, like Drew Gallagher, we have a ton of good educators in this, this district. I may not disagree with Drew on everything, but I'll tell you what, I've watched his classroom. He's a great teacher. And I think if we would just get together and start talking and stop getting on Facebook and stop trying to hate people, stop going up and try to burn somebody's flag on their house, there's no room for any of that. Not in Newburgh, not in Dundee, not in this school district. And if you're one of those people that have to do that, then do it all towards me. I'll take it. Bring it all towards Dave Brown. If you're that mad, there's a reason for everything that this school board has done. And all of it was taken into serious consideration. 
But there are people on this board that have been treated like they should have never been treated. If you're mad at one of them, bring it towards me. And like Renee, I'll pray for you because I am not going to hate you. I am not going to use that word. Go back in our past. Go back to, to Germany. Go back to different times in our, in our past, even in our lifetimes. And where has hate ever taken us? I'll accept anybody and everybody to my, my house for Thanksgiving. I don't care who they are. I don't care if they're gay. I don't care if they're black. I don't care if they're brown. I don't care if they're white. Everybody's welcome in my house. Everybody's always been welcome on all my teams, but I've had people in this audience call me a racist. It's not true. They call me a homophobe. That's not true either. And if we would stop doing that and get together with people, even if we disagree, and even if you disagree at the end of the conversation, that's okay. Stop the hating. People in this community are awesome. We have a lot of great people. I'm looking at people right now that work their tail off in this community. We may not agree on the end goal, but work together on it. If you don't like going to church, don't go to church. If you do, go. But I think everybody in that room, the reason you're sitting here tonight is because you care about education. And everybody on this board does too. We have two student reps here. I've spent my entire life working with young people. What do they want to hear? They don't care about all this stuff. They want to come here and try to make a difference on this school board right now. And a difference to you, especially with kids. That's what they want. So I just ask everybody to stop it. Stop the, the mean talk. Stop all the hate. Stop all that kind of talk. It doesn't do any good. You don't change anybody's mind doing that. And we can't fix the whole country. All we can work on is Newburgh Dundee right now. And there's too many good people. There's a lot of good people out there. I've worked with you on many different projects. We can still disagree. And that's okay. Sorry I went so long. Next up, Dr. Phillips is going to speak to um, on reports presentations. Okay. Oh, sorry. Superintendent gets to talk too. Yeah. I've got a few comments. Um, so I want to kind of brag a little bit on some of our high school kids and, and specifically in athletics. The fall season is wrapped up. So I want to talk about some um, real quick high school football. It had a, a winning season, uh, five and four. They did get into the playoffs. They lost the first round, but winning season. Uh, volleyball, they took second in league. They also went to state, lost in the first round. Um, girls soccer, they took third in league, went to state, lost in the first round. Um, boys cross country, uh, Pacific Conference champs, and ninth in state. Pretty neat. Uh, girls water polo, they are playing for fifth place in state this weekend. And boys water polo are in the state semis this Friday. And if they win, then they're in the championship on Saturday. So that's pretty neat. Um, a lot of great kids and great coaches. Uh, great sports is a family thing. So a lot of great families and it's just neat. Um, I also wanted to bring up uh, Crater Elementary. Um, this Thursday is doing a Veterans Day um, kind of celebration in the morning. And I think that's great that uh, an elementary is taking time to honor our veterans. So I really appreciate that. Um, our next board meeting, as Chair Brown said, is not until the 29th. And so Thanksgiving will have came and gone. So I wanted to take a second to wish everybody happy Thanksgiving. And uh, for me, Thanksgiving's about gratitude and being grateful for what we have. And for me, I'm grateful for this country. I'm grateful for Newburgh. Um, I'm grateful for Newburgh School District. Also wanna welcome Lucia and Moya and I plan on putting you to work, okay? We've got work to do, okay? So uh, yeah, you'll see me in your high school and don't run away. <laughs> We've got work to do, okay? 
Um, also, I wanted to welcome uh, Jillian. She presented uh, at our last board meeting on the uh, student investment account. So a lot of you got to see her then and um, she does a great job for the district and she's our new director of teaching and learning and I'm excited to work with her. Um, so thank you. Thanks Dr. Phillips. We got to keep talking about here about these travel trips. Okay. <clears throat> so those are my okay. So those are my comments. Now we're on to agenda 10. Uh, we've got two exciting things that the board needs to approve. Uh, board travel approval request forms. One is um, the uh, wrestling team has been invited to the Reno tournament, the Reno tournament of champions. And since it's out of state, it needs board approval. And then the second one is our um, varsity cheerleading is going to, uh, I believe, Disneyland for USA Nationals in February. And that needs uh, board approval as well. Both of those are, um, Reno's is not, a na it is a national tournament. It's not nationals, but it's a big tournament and it's a, just an, it's an honor to even be invited. So need approval from the board for those two trips. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the uh, two travel request forms as presented. I second. All right. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you. Um, and then next on the agenda is, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about transportation. <sighs> um, as you know, we have STA as our transportation company, and um, they fell short to start the year. Um, first student, our old company, we were able to convince them to come back and help us out. So they brought in uh, four four drivers that ran an AM route and a PM route to help us out. Um, and frankly, that was all we hoped we needed from them. And um, we needed more. So we brought in, with board approval, we brought in first student more routes and more drivers. And we're now up to nine um, from first student. And then, of course, STA's crew. Um, it's improved. But full transparency, it is not fixed. Our busing is still an issue. Um, we still have eight late routes. We still have, uh, well, I'll just, I had three emails today from upset mothers about their kids um, being outside in the morning and they didn't get picked up for an hour. Um, that's unacceptable, um, but that's our reality. Um, so we are dealing with still issues with timeliness, um, getting kids in the morning, getting kids home. We're dealing with communication issues still. Um, we They do have substitute drivers when they have drivers calling sick, but those subs really don't know the routes. And so it slows everything down. And um, just, I, I don't want to put lipstick on this, folks. It's still not great. And um, we're working on it. We have uh, meetings planned this week uh, with STA leadership to talk more about it and to find solutions. And also uh, we're in constant communication with both firms, but with uh, first student as well um, with how to make this work. So I just, I know this is an, uh, an uncomfortable topic for a lot of people. And I know a lot of families have been burdened with this this year. And so I don't want to fail to talk about it. Um, I feel at times pretty hopeless or excuse me, helpless to fix it, uh, but we are working on it. I think we are moving in the right direction, but we're not where we need to be. And so please know we're still working on it. Um, that's all I have for transportation. And um, now Heather is gonna present financial report. Yeah. So in your board packet, I have included your um, expenditure and revenue report for the month of October. Um, 
you'll have to forgive me. I did find just now an error on there where one of the codes is coded incorrectly on your revenue report. Um, it should, the 3000 group should be your state revenue funds, not, um, not your enterprise community services. And that's just on the revenue sheet. I mean, looking at our financials though, we're, we um, are pretty close to being right in line where we should be for this time of year. Um, when we look at um, how much of the school year has progressed and what expenditures we still have to come, um, we're, we're not far off from where we should be in our budget. Um, our revenues may look a little bit less than they should be, but I would just remind you that um, our big revenue month is the month of November um, when the property taxes come in. Um, and so those numbers, when we look at them again in December, will be significantly different than what you're seeing right now. So there, I did want to point out there was two items on the expenditure report that are already showing um, that if we continue to spend on the um, trajectory that we're on right now, we'll be overspent by the end of the year. Um, so one of those is SIA. Um, and so that's on the very first page of your expenditure report down towards the very bottom. You'll see that instruction in SIA um, is projected to end at 104% of the budget. Um, and I just want you to know that this has been addressed. Um, Jillian and I have spent the last two days revising our SIA budget um, so that we were not over budget um, and all monies in SIA were accounted for. So that um, has been, will on your next report will be um, much look much different than being overspent by the end of the year. Um, on the second page of your expenditure report, Fund 302 is your debt service long-term. This is your energy trust loan. And this was a cool school, a cool schools loan. Um, so I'm not sure why this line item is showing over budget. It, I, when I look at the encumbrances, it looks like there was multiple purchase orders for the same amount. Um, I do not think that we will be over budget by the end of the year in this fund, um, but I need to do some digging to find out why the report is showing that we have encumbered 190% um, of what we budgeted. Um, so the energy trust money comes in on power bills, um, utility bills that um, consumers pay, and that money goes into a side account um, that we track and that money is what is used to pay the loan. So this is not money that's coming um, out of our general fund to pay this loan. This is money that's coming in as revenue um, from utility companies um, and we use that money to pay it. So if we are truly going to be over, we would anticipate that the revenue will also be around 190% over what it, what it was budgeted for. So, but hopefully I'll have a better idea next month why this one is showing so far over. So other than that, I don't have any concerns with your budget expenditures or revenues at this point. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. Board, any questions or Heather? There again, this new layout's really good. Thank you. Super easy to track. Uh, before we get off of that uh, report to presentation, I just wanted to go back. Um, we spoke in the last board meeting about um, student state scores, where we're at, we're above state average, states low. So just because we're above state means we're not very high, we're low too. So I think in uh, my experience, uh, the reason uh, that I'm a big proponent of, uh, of this one is I've watched for years our Newburg Varsity Cheer and our Newburg Wrestling programs. They're super successful. And you could trace it back to one thing. They work really hard. I mean, they work really hard. Um, when I first as a coach basketball shared the gym with the varsity cheer, we had to raise our level of workouts because of how hard they were working out next to us. They were that impressive. They really, really work hard. Um, wrestling team, it's, I take the basketball team in to watch the wrestling team so the basketball players would come back and go, wow, okay, no more fussing, no more complaining. Um, this has been going on for a long time. Lisa Berg with uh, Cheer, Neil Russo, and their staff. They would want their staff to be recognized. It goes back to one thing the board would like to 
to, to it's challenged our superintendent, Dr. Phillips, is working hard and getting back into the academic fundamentals. And um, if you take any of the, the programs at high school, they're not the only two. Take uh, Mike McConaughey with the play coming up with the SpongeBob musical. Uh, those kids work as hard as anybody in any sport. They work super hard at that. And you should go. It's an, it's an amazing few dollars you could spend, and you'll really enjoy it. Uh, Mr. McConaughey does a great job. It goes back to that hard work thing. And I just wanted to shout out to those two programs, especially. Uh, there are many others. Uh, go watch them. They're, they're really fun. But they work really hard. And that's what this board wants for our students. So when they do graduate, they can do the best they can, you know, after they've, they've left uh, the home. So with that said, uh, we got through that part. Future agenda items. It's going to be a busy, busy uh, meeting on 1129. Uh, there'll be a new website platform. This is something that's been going on for about a year. Uh, but with leadership and everything, uh, uh, Dr. Novotny, when he was here as interim superintendent, we talked about this a, a lot. And it, it will come, and it's going to be much better. Uh, I know Dr. Phillips is working really hard on that. Uh, the NEA and the OSEA contracts uh, will be talked about on 1129. Again, Mr. Gallagher was here tonight. He uh, represents the, uh, the uh, teachers union uh, on that one with other people. Uh, the academic calendar, really important. I think that everybody's got an interest on that. Uh, the SPED hiring of Tony Buckner um, as our new SPED director. Uh, Tony comes from being assistant principal at Newburgh High School. He's one of our very best employees in the whole district. He's awesome. Uh, there'll be a principal presentation from Brian Wood from Ewan Young. Brian is awesome. He's also the uh, lacrosse coach. And I think everybody will find that really entertaining. He'll do a really good job on that. And then uh, Tammy Iron from the high school will be going over student fees and new courses being offered. Uh, circle new courses. I think people, as we start to change back into um, what we would have called maybe a lot of people now, it's vocational, now a CT. And those new buildings going out there at the high school are going to be phenomenal. Uh, they're not, you know, built yet, but boy, are they going to be amazing. Um, so uh tammy's going to be talking about some of that and some other new courses too uh i think uh, i think everybody in the community will be excited about those so that's the future agenda items future board meeting again is on november 29th uh again appreciate everybody coming tonight and speaking and uh that's all i have meeting is adjourned thank you hey